I'm going to give you my recommendations on how to load out your Aegis Gladius, and we're starting right now. Aegis Combat Assist activated. Systems green. Thank you so much to all the support from patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers that make this possible. Welcome to a Star Citizen's loadout guide. What's up, citizens? Halloween 2020 is approaching, and Star Citizen has taken to the festivities with an exclusive Vandal helmet awarded for 50 unique player kills in the PU. This can only be done while piloting the Asperia Glaive or the Aegis Gladius. In this guide, I will discuss my recommendations on weapons and components to make the most of this killing machine. If you think this task can be a little daunting, don't worry. Head over to the Subliminal Channel Discord. I've made a couple channels there where you can squirmish other players in a healthy environment. Just choose the Star Citizen role to see the respective chats. I have already reviewed the Gladius this year, and although my thoughts on it haven't changed, my loadout has, so I figured this was a good time to update it. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. The Gladius is a long-serving military light fighter spacecraft developed by Aegis Dynamics and first utilized by the United Empire of Earth Navy in the 26th century. Its frame is easily modified and has undergone numerous technology retrofits in the past three centuries. And today, we're going to retrofit it again to f*** some people up in the persistent universe. I'll also briefly cover stealth as well as my honorable mentions for PvE. Now that we understand the objective of this build, let's take a look at its components. Let's start with the power plant that generates power for our weapons and components. The standard power plant on the Gladius is the size 1 grade 3 military class Regulus. When deciding on a power plant, your priority should be request time and stealth, with max power generation being last, so I'll be adding a slipstream. It's grade 1, stealth class, has almost 1800 max power generation per second and a super quick 1.25 second draw request time. We will lose a significant amount of max power draw, but reduce the time it takes to reach that power draw down to just 1.25 seconds. I'm choosing the slipstream to reduce power up time from a cold start or EMP and reduce my detection range. This choice works great for the rest of this build. However, if you go with energy weapons, you will almost certainly need to use a JS300 instead. Let's discuss its coolers. These cool your weapons and components after they've overheated. The standard coolers on the Gladius are the size 1 grade 3 military class bracer coolers. This is one component that you do not need to upgrade. However, if you want the absolute best performance that's not really worth the cost, I recommend adding zero rushes. They are grade 2, competition class, with a cooling rate of 238 kilos per second and a 3 second draw request time. By upgrading these, you are reducing your power up and EMP recovery time by 9 seconds, but slightly lowering your cooling per second. However, you don't need the extra. An honorable mention would be snow blinds for slightly more stealth at the cost of power up time. For a full explanation on how power plants and coolers work, or for an explanation on how kilo per second is not a unit of measurement, check out my guides on power plants and coolers. Shields and QT drives are coming soon. Now, it's shield generator that protects our ship and these components. The Gladius' stock shield generators are the size 1, grade 3, military class, all stop shield generators. This is another decent stock component that you don't have to upgrade. However, I want to maximize our survivability, so I'll be adding an FR-66. It's grade 1, military class, with an HP pool of over 6100, a 306 HP per second regen rate, blocks a minimum of 50% ballistic fire, has a 3.85 second damage delay, a 5.5 second down delay, and a 10 second request time. And I'll be pairing it with a Mirage that is grade 1, stealth class, with an HP pool of over 3000, a 342 HP per second regen rate, blocks a minimum of 50% ballistic fire, has a 2.14 second damage delay, a 14 second down delay, and a 3 second draw request time. This combo adds the quick regen rate of the Mirage with the all around great FR-66 but it should be noted that this build requires that the pilot takes full advantage of the Gladius' speed and agility. Sporting a Mirage could be a death sentence if you just like to sit there and face tank. Other honorable mentions would be pairing the Mirage with a Guardian for some extra ballistic protection and health pool, or a dual FR-66 build would work better for our less experienced pilots. And lastly, the Quantum Drive that will help you get to the stores that sell these components faster. The standard QT drive on the Gladius is the size 1 grade 3 military class beacon. This drive is pretty quick, and if you plan on staying around Grimhex hoping to catch some fellow PvPers, then maybe you could save the cost of upgrading. 
If you want to drive with a good balance between range and speed, I recommend the Atlas. The Atlas is grade one, civilian class, has 152 megameter per second quantum speed, a 7.5 per megameter fuel requirement, a 5.1 second spool up, and an 8.7 second cool down time. If you're not okay with the extra spool up time, I recommend keeping the Beacon. With an exception to the Atlas, all of these components can be found at New Babbage, but you'll need to stop by PO to get the Atlas. Before we get to weapons, the link to this specific loadout at urkel.games can be found via the link in the description. Also, if you'd like, you can head over to the channel Discord where we have a community of over 1,700 citizens who like to discuss ships, loadouts, components, weapons, and more. And it's where I store my most up-to-date loadouts, link in the description. I'm excited to announce a new art series, Vessels of the Verse. This will be the first of many designs that will be released alongside buyer's guides and loadout guides. They will be available on display in 48 hours, on the merch store in 24 hours, Desktop wallpapers are available right now to Twitch subs, patrons, and YouTube channel members, and mobile wallpapers are available for free via link in the description. Now, let's talk about its stock weapons and my recommendations. Under the nose, the Gladius is equipped with a size 3 hardpoint with a fixed size 3 Mantis GT220 mounted. One GT220 does 29 alpha damage times 1000 RPM for a total of 480 DPS and a 2400 meter range. As you may know, for PvP, I prefer ballistics, and these are the best ones in my opinion, so they can stay. Under each wing, we have another size 3 hardpoint with a fixed size 3 CF337 Panther laser repeater. These are one of my favorite weapons and are my go-to for PvE, but I'm going to add more GT220s here to match the nodes. If you're using this for PvE or don't like to have your ammo limited, I would keep the CF337s and add another one to the nodes. But remember, if you do that, you won't be able to use the stealth power plant. Also, under each wing, we have an MSD-313 missile rack with one Arrestor 3. One Arrestor 3 does 4200 damage, has a 3.5 second lock time, and a 9000 meter lock range. This is a great missile for a preemptive attack with its long range and extra payload. And since we can easily swap between missiles in 311, this can be a great tactic. Another option would be to replace the missile rack with an MSD-322 and add a couple of Rattler 2s. One Rattler 2 does 3500 damage, has a 1.26 second lock time and a 4500 meter lock range. And lastly, underneath each wing near the tips, we have an MSD-322 rack with two Ignite 2s. One Ignite 2 does 3700 damage, has a 1.25 second lock time and a 5600 meter lock range. This isn't a bad missile, but I want the best lock time and to temporarily blind my enemies so I'll be adding Rattler 2s here as well. Using either a complete Rattler build or combining some of them with the Arrestor 3s will honestly be something that I will switch between depending on the situation. If you don't have around 146,000 Alpha UEC to purchase this build at once, I would buy them in the following order. The Mantises can be found in new Babbage like the components, but you'll have to travel to some less common places to get the Rattler 2s. The most important things here are the weapons, shields, and power plants. Let's briefly talk about stealth. Stealth in the Gladius is certainly possible. It would be tough to fire your weapons and stay undetected, but you can certainly cripple an unexpected enemy with a surprise attack. Also, it's certainly possible for you to fire your missiles, especially size 3s from outside of your detection range. So here's how I would load it out. I'll keep the Slipstream power plant from the main build, throw on the competition class grade 1 zero rush coolers, you could go with snow blinds as well, Add two Stealth Grade 1 Mirage Shield Generators, and you can pick whatever QT drive you prefer. For weapons, I'd stick with the GT220s. Ballistics penetrate shields, and most importantly, they don't announce your location to the rest of the verse. Let's take a look at these stealth stats. Your IR in the Gladius after 30 minutes of flying around is around 5,000 with this stealth build. So depending on your opposition's radar, your detection range is between 2,500 and 3,750 if you're not using Afterburner. You are free to fly around at any speed while firing without raising your IR significantly. But if you use Afterburner, it can go up to 20,000. This includes Space Break. So only use it if you're in trouble and need to bug out. I don't see myself using this stealth build to assist in achieving the 50 kills, but it would be fun to do it in other circumstances. I hope you've enjoyed my loadout of the Gladius. I'd love to hear about yours down in the comments. My full review is a few months old now, but my thoughts on them are still the same. If you enjoy my channel, there are so many ways to support it, ranging from free options like Prime Gaming subscriptions and sending Alpha UBC in the verse, sub club subscriptions, merch, to more generous forms of support. Head over to the subliminalchannel.tv to learn how. 
Your support in all forms makes this channel possible. Even your viewership, liking, and subscribing goes a long way. To continue watching, here's a video that I think you may like. Here's a video YouTube thinks you may like. And until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.